Howdy, Internet. I am now live. Fingers crossed it stays up today. We have a, a good stream. The Internet will hopefully hold out. Coffee. Coffee is a must. So, <clears throat> anyway, fingers crossed the stream will come up, stay up, and be live. Let's go check and make sure everything looks good. Let's go to... Let's go there to the dashboard and then let's go to ourselves so it looks like some other people are currently streaming i did not see that but we have a package to install so we're gonna we're gonna do that but i gotta go to stream manager real quick i want to make sure everything looks somewhat good eh, there we go that eh, doesn't look bad all right so it's it's up it's live that's good uh, let's change one thing real quick here in the settings. Go to output. Let's kick that. There we go. We'll just bump that down a little bit today. There we are. Forgive the hair. Forgive the, the hair. It's a Saturday. Um, I got a surprise package today from Micro Swiss. The ng revo direct drive extruder the micro swiss e3d collab so we'll crack this bad boy open up here in just a little bit got my doggo chewbacca here the doggo wants to come hang out he's been liking it out here in the office with me lately so i've just been letting him kind of run around and hang out in here with me huh what's up doggo hmm chuby Chuby, Chuby. He's a blue healer for anybody who couldn't tell. Yeah, he's a blue healer. Hey, good boy. Yes, yes. This collar, I need to get him another one from my cousin. My cousins, my cousin and her husband, they own Cactopa. Good collars. I like them. And he needs a new one, so I'm gonna have to hit them up and get him a new one. We'll probably just get Chewy on it instead of Chewbacca because that's a long name. It takes a lot. So we'll probably just get him one that says Chewy. You know. But anyway, I'm live. I'm just going to kind of hang out here a little bit. We'll chat for a little bit and wait for people to show up. While we're waiting for people to show up, I'm going to gather some of the uh, things I'm going to need for this lovely little adventure. We're going to need a 8 and a 10 mil wrench, which... Thank you, Prusa, for providing that. I've got my iFixit toolkit there. I think I'm missing one of the bits I need. I was doing some work, and it fell on the floor. And I can't seem to find it. I don't know if it went under my K40, which is sitting here, which I am going to get the K40 elevated up a little bit. Just not today, because today we're working on the Ender 3, getting that Micro Swiss NG Revo extruder. It's going to be my first foray into the wide world of Revo. I'm excited. I cannot wait to check out these Revo hot ends. Hear lots of great things about them. So cannot wait to get into that. Uh, we may do something a little different. We may deviate a little bit from the instructions because they want you to cut and crimp the wires. And I think, I think I have the other, the female end of the plug that I need. I can, or the male end mail end i forgot but i think i have the mail end of that plug so we'll we'll get that in there and we'll see how that goes we'll cross our fingers and hope everything works chuby can you stop licking everything you weirdo doggo likes to lick he's currently licking my uh rook 2020 frame that's sitting under there that fabrico had sent out i need to get the rest of the parts for that i know jason at ldo i was talking with him he said he was gonna see what he could do no rushing there whenever he can greatly appreciated um things have been going on so i guess i'll give a little insight real quick into what's what's new what's going on um i am now getting back into the swing of streaming and showing things off and doing stuff and some companies that i've worked with in the past are coming back on board to work with me that's great micro swiss is 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 one of them so they sent me out this guy. I got Sliceworks who sent me their direct drive extruder I put on the OG Ender 3, which is back there, which we'll be doing some more with that uh, here in the future. And then maybe, just maybe for fun, we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison of a 
$150 from Micro Swiss versus $70 from Sliceworks. Maybe we'll do a little side by side and see what kind of quality we can get from them. Hopefully, hopefully we get some good quality out of both. I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely want to be able to keep, you know, all of my sponsors happy. At the same time, I want to show proper stuff. You know, hey, hey, Ron with 26 months. Brother, thank you very much for that. Hey, brother, I got to update the stream info, but boom, we're installing this bad boy. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Speaking of, let me go update that right now while we're sitting here. That would be great, right? Installing and testing out the Micro Swiss NG Revo on my Ender 3 V2. Bam! What's going on the V2? The Ender 3 V2 is sitting right here. My $100 um, micro, or micro Center. Conveniently, I got my micro, I got this at Micro Center, and we're installing a Micro Swiss. Lots of micro going on there. But anyway, let's fix that. Let's also make it, instead of just chatting, let's go to maker, or making and crafting. Is that what it is on here? I keep forgetting. Or is it maker? Maker's matchups? What? There it is. Makers and crafter, or crafting. That's what it is. All right. And boom. There we go. Leave it is. Because for some reason, yeah, we'll do that. There we go. At some point, I'll set up a custom bot on here. But for right now, we're just going to use the uh, stream elements bot. So when you see it pop up, that's what it is. Direct drive, all the things. You are correct, A.A. Ron. Because, again, direct drive, direct drive, direct drive, direct drive, direct drive, direct drive. Uh, the BQ, which is currently DOA, or not DOA, is, is dead, is currently not a direct drive, but I am hoping that people will feel generous and they can give so I can buy upgrades, so we can do streams, so people can learn how these things happen. So hopefully the streams will bring in some revenue, not that I'm looking to make money off of this. We all know that money coming in is money going out anyway when it comes to what I do here. But... Uh, that being said, uh, I guess I'll kind of get back to what I was saying is, which machine is still the Bowden? That'd be the, this guy right here. And then just doing some reverse Bowden stuff on the Bear and on the Voron at the moment. And then, of course, yeah, but, oh, and then I've also got the Switchwire up there. I forgot Switchwire Direct Drive. Um, and then the CR-10 back there is also a Direct Drive, so... The one on the floor is the Huracan. That's the BQ Huracan. It's the one that the it, it had a nasty, nasty uh, fail, and uh, it it decided to uh, spew filament out all over itself and break cables and and encase everything in a nice cocoon. My little blob monster or my nozzle monster, hot end monster, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. But anyway, as you can see, I did, I was nice. I put that there. Also, at, at any point during the stream, if anybody would like to know more about the Revo's, there's a link that takes you right to it. You can go get yourself one. As you can see, it is not a referral link. I get nothing for it. So all I ask is, if you purchase something, just tell them that Maker My Nexus sent you. Just be like, Maker My Nexus, DB3D Dan, they know me as both. So for those who are still used to DV3D or to whatever, it doesn't matter. They know me as both over there now, so you can just tell them that either one sent you. Um, I know that it's going to take some time. They are the best nozzles. You are correct, sir. Speaking of, I, I don't remember what I did with those. I put them in somebody's package, I think. I have a couple of those left. I don't really have anything that uses the Creality-style nozzles anymore. So... Everything is either the E3, you know, the style, or now I have a Revo. And I'm hoping that this will be that gateway drug that will get me into the whole Revo and, like, Re Revo ecosystem. I, uh, I've i always liked Microswiss's stuff. I've always put it on my things. You guys know that. You guys have watched me put on their, their um, 
just their, you know, their, they're all metal hot ends. And then you guys watched me install some of their direct drive kits in the past. And I was even lucky enough to work with Micro Swiss at IRF last year, not, not 2023, but 2022. We were, um, when they announced the NG for the Ender 5, happened to be the same time I was doing a raffle. And they actually pulled one of their NGs that they hadn't even released to the public yet, but were showing off pulled it from a machine and put it on my raffle Ender 5, and we raffled that off, and that went to uh, Critic. He won that in the raffle. So he had, technically, he had the first NG extruder for a Ender 5 in the wild. It was out before they even had it for sale. He had one. So I've been able to have a great relationship with Micro Swiss when it comes to products and being able to test things. Again, this was sent to me free of charge to install and show off. Any and all opinions, again, are my own, but because it is Micro Swiss and we know the quality of the products, I'm sure between the E3D nozzle and hot end setup and their NG extruder, which, as we all know, thanks to proper printing, Joan... I don't know how to say it properly. I say Joan because I know it's not John, but I, I say Joan because I think it's it, I I believe it's along those lines. I I don't mean to butcher it, but John is the the American version of his name. But uh, John, as he showed off in his tug of war video uh, last year or beginning of this year, wherever that was, um, this this guy was the MVP, the NG extruder kicked butt in the extruder contest so that being said we know they're a badass uh, extruder so a badass extruder matched with a great hot end and nozzle setup i i don't have a feeling i'm gonna have a problem with this uh so we're gonna at some point here very soon i'm gonna crack into this bad boy and we'll start the install so that being said i guess uh you want to open the box and see what's in the box should we? Should we? Should we open up the box? But while I wait for an answer, um, chance of crap very low. Exactly. Hey, hey, Ron, you know it, man. When it comes to those two, it's it's very, very low chance that it's going to be a subpar product. I will say for the price difference between this guy and this guy up here, the direct drive kit this is pretty much similar to what focus came out with on the odin it's it's almost identical um and it was a good extruder i had no problems with it i still i still have it on there i'm still using it but i also have to get that bad boy down and do some testing and tweaking and tuning and getting some profiles dialed in so that'll be one of those dan's being lazy streams where i can just set the printer here and we'll tweak some tuner settings and set or slicer settings and then we'll throw it at the printer and see how it does and if that doesn't work and we'll adjust until we get a good profile and when we got something that looks good the print looks nice the quality is good then i'll probably upload that to my uh my github so if anybody wants it they can go over there and grab it but uh usually i do it in slice works or uh slice works in uh super slicer and then i export it out in super slicer as well as uh prusa slicer so don't really play around much with Cura anymore, but it's not to say that I can't start, you know, playing around with Cura too, and then releasing profiles up there. So it, it very well could be a thing where I, you know, as I get good quality profiles that work for me, I'll put them out there as a nice base for someone to start with, and they can work off of those. And who knows, maybe down the road, I can start doing that for manufacturers and helping them out, you know, just something to do to help the community and help help you know manufacturers be able to get people up and running quicker so um yeah i mean right now though i was going to say is i've been having some some good luck with some of my past sponsors on videos with products and things um i'm waiting to hear back from big tree tech on this guy if we're going to be able to work something out with getting that guy taken care of i'm hoping so if they do great if not i will just buy a hot end put it on there all in all the huracan has been a great little printer i've just had two failed prints that have knocked that thing out and i've had to kind of start over uh so i'm hoping that either a uh i can just acquire another hot end assembly from someone who has one that isn't going to use it 
or I can B, get the parts I need and either repair what's there, or I can get that, uh, they've got the, the H2, um, BQ's got the H2 Revo. I would love to get that since I'm already kind of going down the rabbit hole. I would love to get their H2 Revo to put on there. Uh, realistically, it wouldn't take too much, since it is V-wheel and belted, it wouldn't take too much to uh, swap that to a Micro Swiss, uh, to a Micro Swiss as well. There's the board on there that everything connects to. I'm sure I could find a way. I'm sure I could find a way to make that work. We could either use the board or, or just run the old wires back and just direct wire everything and take that board out of the equation. So maybe that'll be a thing too. Maybe I'll I'll either a uh, attempt to do that or b I'll contact Micro Swiss and see if they're their game. And a hey, Ron, since you're here, maybe you can help with the designing of a, a a new build plate to hold the board and the wheels and be able to mount the NG to it. And then maybe I can hit up like uh, PCB Way, see if I can have them cut me a plate and we can give it a whirl might be cool that'd be a nice way to get pcb way involved i've been i've been looking to work with pcb way uh, so that might be might be something to do to get get my foot in the door with pcb way so cool my, it's, it's just just thoughts coming out um but uh also uh libre myself and and libre uh, we've had such a, a great relationship they've been very supportive i love working with libre um and with everything that they've been announcing and the stuff they got coming down the, the line, is the BQ bed sensor still good? Uh, bed sensor, help me out, A.A. Ron. You're talking about the, the micro, the, the, the um, micro probe? Their, their, their little micro probe? Yeah, it's, it's fine. The probe is good. It, it still works. So it would just be, you know, figuring out a way to incorporate that in. Oh yeah, no, no, it didn't kill it. It's still fine. Yeah. Um, but I've had a lot of good luck with Libre. I like what they're doing. I like where they're going, and we've been working together on quite a bit of stuff. As a matter of fact, um, I was able to get um, Libre directly in touch with some of the main sale OS guys, and they've been basically building a really great relationship there. Yes, I did the the thing. Uh, but they're building a really good, uh, they got a really good rapport going. They got really good communication going back and forth. And I have been testing out some uh, mainsail OS images directly from mainsail for the La Potato, which, fingers crossed, uh, would put DSI video output ports on the boards. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, AA Ron. I know they've got some more boards coming down the pipe. Um, their cottonwood board and their sweet potato are two boards that are, the sweet potatoes out, the cottonwood is still kind of like a, a pre-production board, but they've got some runs going. I should have some of those soon. Uh, when I get those, we'll, we'll check them out on stream, talk about them, see what they got. I know that it's really great because I'm seeing what main OS guys are looking for and talking directly to Libre, they're working to make these things happen real fast. Like, a couple of things they asked for, uh, they asked them for it, and within a few hours, they're like, here you go. I mean, they designed the split stream tool that's on the Libre website right now to help split stream your, uh, your OS build. They designed that and put it out in a day because the guys from... Uh, mainsail said hey you know this would be great if we could have something like this and he was like i'm working on it i'll get back with you and then later that day he was like here's the tool enjoy it's on our github so that is the cool part about working with being able to kind of get libre and mainsail together is because these tools that are coming out are going to be available for not just mainsail os but anyone so if you have like a an idea for something and you want to put out an image for libre it's just a matter of Grab the split streams tool, grab your OS that you want, make the, you know, set up your scripts that you want to run, push it in there, pack it back up, make your image, test your image, and then boom, shoot it out there, you know. So Lawrence, 
Slorence or Sir Lawrence or Sir Lawrence. Anyway, hi. Thank you for the uh, follow. Uh, follows are greatly appreciated, and the best part is they're free. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, so watching that that relationship though, kind of oh, Stace makes hi. How you doing? Is it actually Stace or Stacy? I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to offend. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, piss anyone off. <laughs> Stacy with a Y. Okay. So it is Stacy makes. Okay. Just making sure. How you doing, Stacy? Nice to see you. I look like shit. And I apologize. I do use foul language on here. I try to keep that to a minimum. I want to try and keep my, my streams as PG-13 as I can. Everybody, all PG-13 movies are allowed one F-bomb. I try not to use them anymore. I try to keep them out of the streams, but you may hear an F-bomb from time to time if things are just really not going well or I get real hyped up. Um... But, so Stacy, I'll show you as well. Boom, there it is. Micro Swiss sent this bad boy out to me to check out, try out, and we're going to put it on the Ender 3 V2, which is sitting right here. Pick that bad boy up for $99 at Micro Center. So if you have a Micro Center nearby, and I don't know if they're still running the deal, but if you keep watching when they do their $99 printer, you can pick one up if you're looking to. Oh, yes, yes. No worries on the language. Okay, good. And yeah, you're going to, I'm going to be installing it here pretty quick. I was just kind of giving a quick update as to where, you know, where I've been, what I've been up to, and, you know, some of the relationships that um, I built over the years with a couple of different uh, manufacturers and how I am looking to hopefully keep those going and growing. Uh, currently, I was talking about your vaping with me. All right. Yeah, it's a bad habit. I know. I picked it back up after not smoking for many, many years. Uh, I started vaping CBD. Just a quick background. I started vaping just CBD to help with like joint pain and stuff. But I also was about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. So I had a lot of achy joints and stuff. Uh, yeah, better than anal. Yeah, very true. Uh, the studies coming out of England are saying that it's not great, but it's definitely 95% better for your lungs than if you were to smoke is what I, I last heard. It was a study out of England. So not, not telling people to vape. I'm just saying that vaping will give you the same, give you that same feeling. Um, but it is 90, 95% less damaging. There's still popcorn lung and all that stuff that they're still learning about, but so not going to tell people to do it because it's not a good thing. Don't do it. If you can avoid smoking or vaping, please do. Live healthy, be healthy. But um, anyway, what I was kind of going into was talking about some relationships. I've built up one with Micro Swiss, one with Tree Tech and BQ, uh, another one with Jason at LDO Motors. Jason is an amazing person. LDO is a great company. They provided me many motors for many of my builds. As a matter of fact, this one right here is my bear. A uh, good portion of the parts on that are LDO parts. Uh, the frame, the motors, the build plate, uh, the heater, uh, and uh, the, the, the screen on the front there, that's one of their OLED screens that they came out with a couple of years back that was kind of becoming popular, which is on a lot of machines nowadays. But it, uh, LTO Jason has been a huge, huge supporter of everything I've done, and I'm, I'm grateful for him as well. And then, of course, you know... Um, Libre Computer, I was talking about them. Those guys have been amazing to work with. They've been a, a great help in the community. And uh, I'm excited for the future with them. But uh, today's stream is about these guys right here. They uh, they are amazing as well. Um, also, Sliceworks, I can't forget those guys right there. That little direct drive on the Ender 3 Pro was provided by them. And it's a great little extruder so far. You can see there's a, a cube on there. I have to do some tweaking and tuning to my profiles and we'll do that another day. Uh, today is Micro Swiss Day on the V2. So um, I gotta stop saying um, guys. I gotta remember that instead of saying um, I just need to stop talking, give you a pause, 
and then say the words I want to say without adding an um in there, feeling as though I need to say um to keep you uh, interested. See, I just put an um or an uh in there. So let's get going. Uh, give me a second here to kind of move the camera a little bit. I've got my little webcam here. This is going to be a great, great view today. Let me tell you. Let me put that right there. So when I fire this up and I go like this, bam, look at that. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Let's go this way. Boom, there we go. Let's uh, straighten that out. There we are. All right. So let me set this bad boy down. Let's crack this package open and see what we get in the box here. I mean, I know what we get in the box. Micro Swiss already puts it on the website. So let's let's get in here. Ah, uh, got to cut through the plastic. There we go. Got it. There we go. Oh, got to cut the sides. I forget to seal the package even better. They tape the edges. Oh, Chuby, what's a matter? Are you not getting attention right now? My dog Chewbacca is in here. I call him Chewy, or I call him Chuby. He he's a weird little blue healer. All right, boom, boop. All right, you've got your step by step instructions. Please visit. I've already got the site up. Eagle Brett, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Glad you're here. We've got our little bag of parts with these little connectors they want you to cut and use these i'm going to see if i actually have the proper end to connect to the ends that are already there and if i do stephen pool good to see you hope you're doing well uh, but if i have the proper other end of the cables i'm going to just crimp on some actual plugs and we'll use the stock plug that way in the future if i ever have to swap something i can just unplug plug in and go i won't have to cut these off and add new ones on so probably won't use those if i don't have to but we got the screws we're going to need we've got our extension cable for the extruder motor set that off to the side we've got the screws and some zip ties here the zip ties are sticking to the screws but we got a little pack of zip ties to hold everything together the screws we need to mount that to the 2020 extrusion and then the star of the show that bad boy right there that thing is beautiful these ng extruders from micro swiss are just amazing i love these things nothing else in the box so we'll set that off to the side but now that we got this guy out there you go you've got your 3d printed fan duct with your mounts for your fan you've got your uh, blower fan goes here your hot end fan goes right here you've got that ldo motor which yes they are true genuine ldo motors from jason uh you did add a 5015 to it nice nice yeah i can say that would probably be a, a nice thing uh here's their nice little machined aluminum part you can see the the mill marks uh, nice little piece of aluminum there and then of course the star of the show down here that e3d hot end which let's see something Oh, yeah, I can't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. It, it just took a little more force than I had to give right now. It is new install, so I'm sure that's probably part of it. There we go. It's coming out. Ah, this little silicone piece is making it hard to grab, but there we go. I am finding that as I push down and turn, it works better. I think it's probably the tension of the spring. So... We'll unscrew this bad boy real quick because I just want to see how nice that is. There we go. Look at that. Let's take a look at this little nozzle here. Check that out. It's pretty sweet. And the red ring indicates a 4, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. There's your heater cartridge with the little spring under there. A little, a little hard to see, I know. This camera is garbage. I need better cameras, guys. But there you go. Put that back now. <laughs> but anyway, ease of use. You just stick that back up in there. Push it up. And 
just twist it back into place. So definitely like that. There's a bit of threads there though. Wow. Definitely want to make sure. And then it's got a nice little part on the nozzle there that bottoms out. Uh, that little rib there when you tighten it back in. There we go. And then, like I said, I'm going to check and see if I have the proper ends for here so that I won't have to necessarily cut those off because they say to cut them off and then crimp on the other. So I'm going to have to check my my parts and see if I have the right female ends or sorry, male ends. I keep forgetting the pinned side is the male side. Give me a second to stand up here, guys. Get up in everybody's business. Go through all of my my things here. Let's see if this kit has the right connectors in it. Ta-da! And then I need the two pin. One. Uh-oh. Okay. Phew! That one was used. I don't need a used one. I need a non-used one. There's one. And... Maybe we get the second one out. Oh. Actually, no, these are going to be different because these don't have... Yeah, they're different. However... Yeah, they are not the right ones. Dadgummit. Well, I guess we can always cheat and just, you know, put those, uh, uh, put something else in there for now. And then order the right ones. Let's figure out which ones those are. Has anybody got a, a knowledge of those and potentially a link? Huh. Let's see. And for the moment, we could always... Use the good old DuPonts here. Let's see. No, nope. I don't think those will fit. Will they? No, nope. they won't fit down in there. So those won't work. All right. All right. Well, then I guess we may have to cut that after all and splice those on, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, if, if they're going to send it that way, then we'll do it that way, right? Why not? So. Anyway, let's get the uh, let's get started on this, shall we? Be kind of nice to get this bad boy up and running. Don't forget, if at any time during chat you're wondering where to get one, if you type "bang ng rebo" in chat, poof, it'll pop up right there for you. So, really wish my stream would stop dipping out on you guys. I do apologize for that, but yeah. Now, this thing is a beastly little unit, and I cannot wait to get it installed. Let's set that off to the side. I'm going to stand up here and do a little walking around. we got to plug this guy in real quick so we can take out the filament. There we go. So we got to heat that up, take out that filament. We've got an ad break. <laughs> Mm. Ugh. perfect time for an ad break so for those of you who are not on an ad who currently are able to see this awesome we're just going to go into prep here preheat and get this thing warming up so we can get that filament out of there then we'll start the disassembly of this guy And that way we can take this off. I do know it says we need to relieve some tension here, but we'll get we'll get to that point. We will get there. Bitrate is coming back. Yay! I do want to build a like a stand-up desk that I can put like right in this area here so that I can kind of stand and work and then when I don't need it it can be like rolled out of the way. I think that would be nice. Should we go outside? Are you tired of being in here? Let's go outside. I'll be right back guys. Let me just let him out while the ads are still running. There we go. 
Okay. You be a good boy. No, nope, I'm not going in. There we go. <laughs> He's outside now. And I'm back. Not that you guys missed me, because the microphone should have picked me up while I was out there. But, there we go. Hot end is warm enough now. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to manually push and pull. Push a little through. And then pull it back. And... Talked about perfect on that last print. This is all that's left of the last print I did. I did some drawers for a box. So let me put this here. And give me just one second, guys. I got to mute myself for just a moment. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I have a daughter that's asking silly questions, because why not, right? That's what they do. Anyway. All right. Clean that off. Come back here to prep. Go down and cool it down. We'll let that cool down a little bit. And then we'll kind of start digging into this guy and tearing it all down. And just so that I know that I do things according to you know, the directions. We'll bring those up. Let me show you guys here. Boom. There's the directions. And it, it tells you, here's what's in the box, or here's the tools you'll need. Here's what's in the box. Preparations, remove filament from the original hot end to allow, and allow the printer to cool, which just did. Of course, it says to turn off and unplug the printer, which I will. Then it says to lower your bed springs, which I will. We'll do that while we're waiting for it to cool down. Why not, right? Kind of run those down. I'm going to jump back to this one for you guys. Run those down. And then... That one's down. That one. There we go. They're all run down now, so they're all nice and smushed. I need to replace these springs. Uh, once I put some kind of bed level on this, I'll replace those with some spacers. Until then, uh, I need to get the nice yellow springs. You know, or the blue ones. I guess I could put blue ones on this because you know, it's blue. You know, it's Creality, and they did blue for accessories. Could also reprint these parts and do whatever color I want. Black the whole thing out. Let's make it black. Like a race car. Okay. That is cooling down. The hot end is down to uh, 80, 79. So we'll, we'll kind of get started here. Let me go back to the instructions now. It's telling me to remove the fasteners from the rear using the 2 millimeter Allen wrench, which let's see if I have the two. Let's see if this is the one I'm thinking it is. Uh, interestingly enough, guys, my, my screws back here are Phillips head. They're not Allen's. Wow. So if you get the $99 Micro Center one, they use Phillips head screws in the back. Interesting. I think. Yep, they're Phillips. All right, well, if you get a Micro Center $99 one, guys, they actually come with Phillips head screws in them. Look, I'm not making that up. 
Let's see, will it focus? Yeah, there you kind of can see it. Anyway, yeah, so they're Phillips head. They did say unplug it, but I'm going to let the fan blow for another minute or two here, and then I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Let go, screw. This one screw doesn't want to let go. It's being very stubborn. There we go. Okay. Is there another screw I'm missing? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's uh, kind of grabbing on there. There we go. Maybe. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, they are right. It does kind of feel like you're going to break that, pulling that off of there. You've got to wiggle it a little. Wiggle it and jiggle it. Man, it's amazing how dusty this thing's gotten already. Anyway, let's power it down now. And then we'll unplug it, because got to do things the proper way. I don't want you guys to think I'm, I'm a careless individual. Power's out. There we go. No power. We've got to get our cutters here. And try to bring you guys in as best I can. It says to cut the zip ties here. So we'll start nipping away at these zip ties. These cutters are garbage. And my Play-Dohs, too. I've, I've kind of abused them quite a bit. Take all these zip ties out here. There we go. There. Okay. Okay. That's all loose now. Pull those back a little bit. And then let's see. Cut all the zip ties. Now they want me to take the fans out. So we've got to take these fans out. We'll see what kind of screws they use. Phillips head as well. Look at that. Again, with the Phillips head. They're not using your standard allen head screws guys they're using phillips heads there's uh two screws and it looks like i might have to step away for just a minute guys i have a daughter that's having a meltdown because she ran out of time on her phone and she needs to be on the internet it keeps her quiet so i'm not going to argue but uh here we go take those out fans a little dusty dirty let's see here let's see yeah okay there's a screw down inside here take that screw out and then this whole fan assembly comes out and away from everything and then two more screws down here. Take that one out. Didn't fall, but that's okay. There we go. Now it fell. Yeah. Get those two little guys out of there. And then we can lift this fan up and off. And there's our two fans out. Let's wipe these down, clean them off real quick. Find my little dusty brush here. My little brush. Get in there and get them fan blades kind of cleaned off while I've got it apart, right? I don't remember what this brush came with, but it came with something. It's been a nice little brush. It's a soft bristle, long, works great for just knocking all the dust off everything. Gets inside these little blower fans too. push up from the bottom and just kind of keep forcing the 
brush down in there. While you spin it a little bit manually, cleans up most of that. So there we go. Cleaned out our fans. Next thing to do, push this back. Give ourselves some room to work. Oh look, one of the fans has a plug on it. Do they both have one hiding on there? No. Interesting. The blower fan on this one, after I pulled the sheet back, actually has a plug on it. Way up there. Cool. Let's see. Yep. Cool to the touch now. Let's uh let's let's get rid of all that dust. Man, it's dusty in here. I gotta I gotta get this floor redone so I can get rid of some of the dusty concrete dust. Oh. There we go. Wipe the bed off real quick. Uh, that being said, pull this little guy out. I'm not cutting it. I'm just using my clippers to grab it and pull. Same thing on this side, up at the extruder, which you guys can't really see. Sorry. Let me uh, find a way to elevate you guys. So you can kind of get up in everything, you know? Let's see. Does that work right there? Oh, that's a little better. There we go. And you guys see my tote of crap. <laughs> um, but, let's see here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Where, oh, where did I put my wrench? Wrench, there it is. Okay. Take our 10 mil wrench, loosen this guy up. Nope. All right, well, we'll take it all the way out. It's not a big deal. Just hold up on the tube, twist this guy loose, see if we can twist it by finger now. We can. Awesome. There we go. It's all the way out. That is stuck down in there. Why is that stuck down in there? All right. That is kind of bad. Man, there we go. Came out. Oh, the tube was pretty much wearing through right here, guys. It got a little bulge on the side. Uh, so the stock tube did not last very long. I have hardly that many prints through here. And looking at it, that is not built up on the inside. So that is... Reasons why to buy Capricorn tube, right? All right, get you some Capricorn tube or cap tube, as they say. There, pull that little fitting off. Those are always nice to keep and have around. Here's that stock garbage tube. Let's see. All right, well, get that out of there. We'll just toss that off to the side for the moment. We will loosen some stuff up here and take some more bits out. Let's kind of go down and see. We got that out of there. Take the screws off and then we have to pull the clip there and unplug that there. And then it says take the extruder apart. So we'll we'll kind of keep going down the way. It, it's telling me first to pull the um, extruder off the mount, which is fine with me. Let's make sure I grab the right bit here. Okay, so we'll take this one out, take this one out, there we go, and I'm going to come through those cables and under here so we have a little more room to work, but there's that out of the way, and now they want me to turn it around so we can work on the extruder assembly here. And with this guy, take off, oh wait, unplug the motor. There we go. Motor's unplugged. So we take this off now. One screw loose. 
Can we get to that one without this one being in the way? No, of course not. Can we get in there? No. All right. Well, let's uh, change a few things up here. Quick tip, find a Torx head that will fit inside the screw you want to take loose, and you can use a Torx head. We'll take the tensioner spring out from the extruder. There we go. Torx head the same size does work. So if you ever have that problem, use the Torx. Uh-oh. I have a daughter calling me, guys. Give me just a second. It never fails. Every time I get into a stream, a daughter calls. Give me just a second, guys. I got to go meet my daughter at the back door to uh, get her phone unlocked. So I'll be right back. Just hang tight a minute. All right, sorry about that. There we go, I'm back. And where are we at here? Do, do, do. All right, got that all apart. Motor, finish taking off the extruder motor. Okay, close that, come over here, and we'll finish taking off the extruder motor. It's that one. Then this guy down here. Okay, that one came off with it. Now we switch out to our Torx head because we need that one and I can't find the, the uh, Allen to fit it. Okay, motor is loose. Take the stepper out. There we go. Lift up the full extruder assembly. Take that out of the way. No more extruder. Extruder is gone from here, which is good because I was running into an issue where my filament was getting real close to this uh, lead screw here. So I was going to have to print something, but thankfully this showed up and now we don't have to. That being done, a large bulk of the stock parts can kind of sit off to the side now. Get these little screws. Okay, up here, are they magnetic? Yes, good. These little screws, I'm going to throw all of this back in the Micro Swiss box, actually. That way I don't 
lose lose them. Whoop. There we go. Back in the Microsoft box. There. It's all back in the Microsoft box. Good place for it. Non Microsoft products in a Microsoft box. There we go. Throw that away. Throw that in there. And let's oh, grab these couple of screws here and this clip. All that in there. We'll go through and organize all that fun stuff later. Blasto, what's going on? Will this work with the Creality Neo models? I am not 100% certain. I don't want to tell you it will when I don't know. Let me, uh, let me do something here. Let's go back and take a look at what we see here. It does say fits. Uh, yes, Ender 3 Neo V2, or the Ender 3 V2 Neo X limit switch bracket is required. But uh, here you go. Bam, right there, bottom of the list. Ender 3 V2 Neo. It does say it needs this special bracket, which is a 3D print. So you just grab that, print that, and uh, let's see, how's that go? Goes inside, and oh, okay. So it's just a replacement that goes over the over that to move the switch out. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Let's go ahead and close this now. But yeah, they are 150 bucks, which 24 volts, $150. It's your extruder direct drive all in one, and it gets you converted to the uh, uh, NG or to the Revo system. So it's up to you to decide if that's money you want to spend. I'm not going to tell you to. I'm going to tell you that I am currently at... Uh, this step here now where we need to do the butt splicing. So they tell us to cut off the ends of this one. And then it tells us to cut the ends there and then butt splice everything together. Uh, doo -doo -doo. See, they show the little butt splices here. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and start working with cutting and getting everything prepped for butt splicing so we won't we won't bother taking these guys out because we won't need to so let's jump back to you here there we go let's spin this guy back around how is mr blasto today hopefully mr blasto is doing well i'll grab this guy here because we will need oh they are telling me i need to pull the fan off of here it does show it in the picture it didn't say it in the directions but we're going to do it so let's pull the fan shroud off real quick so fan shroud's got to come off it's just two screws one over here on this side there we go we're going to keep those out because we will need to put those back on and then take this one here and the whole shroud comes right off and now it's all exposed easier to get to you. <laughs> Blasto, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. So let's set this on here. Grab this guy here. And let's let's just see something here real quick. When we put this on, it's going to be in this general vicinity. And this is going to come up over the top. So I want to see just how much wire I'm really going to need to keep. Um... So if we cut it right above the Kapton tape, there's some Kapton tape on here. If we cut it right above that, that should leave us, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that'll leave us more than enough if we come all the way to the end here. There's, there's, there's plenty of wire left. So we will cut this just above this piece of Kapton tape that's holding everything together. Grab our cutters here. There's our thermistor wires. These are not... Um, Polarized. You don't have to worry about right and or you know positive negative. I'm gonna cut that part right off. Throw it in the box. Out of sight, out of mind, unnecessary at this point. And then we also need to do that on here. And they show they're cutting it right at the top. This does have the sticker on it, so we'll slide that down. And then 
I mean, I'm going to cut them a little off because they'll make it a little easier to hide having them staggered. So I will cut them both right there. And then at this point, I already know it's a 24 volt. It says right there, 24 volts, 40 watts. Hard to see because it's blurry, but it is a 24 volt, uh, 40 watt uh, cartridge. And I am going to slide this off and I'll keep this for my records going forward because it's got some information on it that they may need if there's ever an issue. There. Now let's grab our wire. There we go. For stripping back some wire. Let me see if I need to strip back the wire. Do they say to? No, they don't. Okay, because these are just bite right through the insulation. Okay, so there is actually no need to actually splice, like, like to remove any of the insulation. So we don't need these. Get rid of these. Let's go into the kit here, and we'll grab out our butt splices. Put that bag open real quick here. Let's turn you guys a little bit more. There we go. Rip our little bag open. Get our stuff out. We're going to set it all down right in front of me here. And then these are the butt splices. They have a uh, dielectric grease in here to keep from liquids getting in there. Wire Circumciser 2000s, yes. And then you push both ends of the cable in, and when you push this little orange button down with a pair of pliers, there's a small set of metal uh, teeth inside that bite into the wire and complete the uh, circuit between the two. So, let me find my, my squishing device. Um, do I have a good pair of like evenly pressing pliers, I do not. All I have is these. We will make do with these guys. They, they will be fine. They, we can make this work. So, first thing we want to do is take, I'm going to put this back down under so it's easier for me to work with. They're a little closer together now. And you want to bring two wires together like so. Let me bring you guys in closer now. If you guys are too close, I'm sorry. Let me see. How's that work? There we go. Put it right on the printer. Anyway, you take one wire and push it up one hole. Ooh, these wires are quite thick and required quite a bit of force, but you want to push it all the way up. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I forced it all the way up in there. And then we take the other wire here same thing put it in push it all the way up and then both of your wires should be pressed all the way up to the top there hard to see i know but white's up to the top red's up to the top i can't push them in any further then what you're going to do is hold those together grab your pair of pliers here and while pushing in squeeze down and then I twist to the other side, squeeze down again. And as you squeeze it down, some of that dielectric grease that's in there will probably ooze out. And if it does, not a big deal. Just wipe it off. I just wiped it on the counter. And then give these wires a tug to make sure that they are bit down in there. You don't want them to be loose and pop out. But there we go. Wipe that dielectric grease off. Now we need to repeat this process again for all the rest of the wires. So let's see here. I have this thing with OCD. The way I did one is the way I want to do all of them and it hurts nothing. It doesn't matter which side these are on. It's just for my OCD more than anything. So the way I do one is the way I do them all. Anyway, push that all the way up in there. Like I said, bottom it out. And then push your other wire up in there. Again, remember, red and white is your uh, your heater cartridge. Your red wire is your heater cartridge wire. First, remember that. So, red wire is heater cartridge to red and white stripe, which is heater cartridge. So, make sure you connect those up right. And then, same thing. Grab with the pliers here. Give it a squeeze down. Let's see. 
Give them a nice good squish. I want to make sure it presses down. You may have to squeeze it a few times, which is what I'm doing there. And then turn it around and squish down on the other side. Let's see. There's that. There's that. There we go. I'm going to push it down until it's flat. Okay, guys? So it's nice and flat. Same thing as before. Give it a tug. Nothing. Give it a tug. And then again, you got that dye electric grease that's kind of oozing out of there a little bit. Probably hard for you guys to see at the moment. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. That dye electric oozing out. Check it out after the live. Uh, if you go to Dan's main Twitch page, they should be under past streams. What's that? Uh, you are restraining yourself from commenting. Okay, Blasto. Sorry, guys. Let me bump back up here and chat real quick. Is this saved uh, for future viewing? Uh, first time? Hey, uh, actually, Stacy, I'm going to start taking the live streams that are informative like this and uploading them uh, directly to my YouTube, which is, again, Maker, uh, Maker Mind Nexus. So if you go there, it'll be over there after this. So you will see it over there. And, uh, yeah, you'll be able to check it out there. Um, a lot of the, the Twitch stuff, it, it makes you, you know, pay to be a sub to the channel type thing so that you can get access to those things afterwards. Uh, this is an informative thing. Whether it's correct or not, I will not... I will not take credit for anything that happens to your machine while following my instructions. Let's put it that way. Uh, back to this, though. Uh, I will upload it to YouTube after the stream is over, so it will be up on YouTube. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to get it over there on Maker Mind Nexus. I'll be uploading it over there after this. I probably could have streamed it to both, but Twitch is where I like to stream to. If I do something that's useful... Then I try to push it over there, you know. You follow on the YouTubes as well? Thank you very much for that. Greatly appreciated. Love all the followers I can get. Trying to get up to, um, what is it? Trying to get up to my uh, 1,000 on everything. I got TikTok. I'm trying to get to 1,000 on. So if anybody would is on TikTok, again, make her my nexus on all the socials. Please, please tell your friends. Help me out. Uh, if you can financially or monetarily help me out, greatly appreciated. There's a tip link down below. There's always the PayPal. Uh, those things greatly help, especially in the world we live in today. But again, same thing. Put them in. Give them tugs. Make sure none of the wires want to pop out. They're in there solid. We're good. And then on to the last wire. And we'll do the same thing. You just insert one in and all the way up. Grab the other wire. Insert that one in and all the way up. I'm all the way up. That stupid song stuck in my head now. See how it is? How do you or how do you tip? Uh, if you look below the stream, there's a tip link. You can click on that, and then you can do it that way. Uh, also, you can go to there should be a PayPal link I think down there too. You can throw a PayPal. Uh, if you're on Twitch and you have a Amazon Prime sub that you haven't used, you can always use your Amazon Prime sub. That gives me a little bit of Jeff Bezos's money. Lord knows I love taking Bezos's money. Uh, and then once I can monetize the YouTube channel, uh, then I will, and you'll be able to get you know just watching videos will help over there. Um, but like I said this is being streamed on Twitch and will be uploaded to YouTube. So for those on Twitch, thank you. Watching live. Those that will be watching this on YouTube after the fact, same thing. Thank you. Greatly appreciated all around. Eagle Brett, I believe the tip link needs to be updated. I just did Eagle Brett before the stream, so check it again and see. Let me know. If, if, if you want to use it, use it. Let me know. Or even if you don't, just click it and tell me if it works. You don't have to actually give me money. Not a requirement. But there we go, guys. So... Our two thermistor wires are crimped together. The white, uh, the white wires coming off the printer are going to the yellow wires on the thermistor. The red wires off of the printer are going to the red and white wires off of the heater cartridge for the hot end. So those are all crimped together. Like I said, gave them all tugs. They're all nice and snug. 
everything should be connected there. We'll know if everything made contact once we turn it on and we'll see if it freaks out. If it does, we'll squeeze them a little tighter and put a little more force on them, you know, make sure they bite through. Um, that step is now done. Now we're going to be on to removing the uh, cartridge or the carriage. So now we're down here. We have to detach the belt from the carriage plate. So for that, we just loosen it up and go from there. So let's jump back over here. We just twist the little dial. Let me move you guys back out again. Now this is all farther away stuff. I need multiple cameras for multiple angles, you know? There we go. Anyway, twist this guy loose, slap it in so the belt gets loose, and then should be able to push the belt off on one side. Come on. There we go. Belt's loose there now. And grab the other side. And pull the belt loose. Still coming up with a 404 for the tips, huh? Okay. Um, is that the Streamlabs tips page, or is that the YouTube one, or the PayPal one? Eagle Brett. Because I can double check 79ers. Mm. Last of an amazing decade. We are. It means I'm old. But that's okay, I'll take it. I'm, I'm, I'm aging well, like a fine wine. Says some people. My wife. Stream Elements. Best year ever. I have to agree. Let me take a look at Stream Elements here real quick, guys. StreamElements.com Log in is me. Bear with me, guys. Let me get that fixed. Go to my dashboard. Uh, let's go down to... Oh, is the is that the tip link down in the 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 thing? Ah, hold on. Got some coffee. Cheers. Be right back. All right. I already down two cups of black rifle coffee. My wife got some black rifle today. Uh, hopefully the stream is not too badly jerking out right now. I just realized it's going to garbage. I should have actually just recorded everything too and i could just did a direct upload from the record so even when the stream is hot garbage for you guys it would still look good after the fact i'll have to remember that lovely little tool for going forward uh yeah uh okay yeah that's uh the one the banner shows okay give me a second here let me go to my channel and fix that my bad that's actually on the channel it's doing that my bad my bad okay give me a second oh let me let me mute myself first off. Jeez. All right. Close that. Click down here. Edit panel. Come down. Find my tips one. There we go. Change that to Maker Mind Nexus. And hit submit. All right. Uh, give it a try again, if you would, please. Let me know. Uh, my printers, i got to update those, too, because I've got all kinds of stuff in there that is and isn't. So, anyway. Let's, let's go ahead and get out of the edit panel. Scroll down here. Let's click on the tips. And, yep, now it's working. Yep, now it's working. I know it still shows the DB3D stuff, guys, with the Maker Mind, and that's because I'm still in that transition from being DB3D Dan, which I'm not totally 3D printer oriented. Oh, daggum. Those daughters, I love them. Oof. Okay, that's there. That's done. Let's uh, switch tips now, and let's get on to it. I do thank you to whoever is planning to use the tip function. Uh, it is greatly appreciated, and I know Mrs. Maker Mind Nexus, aka Mrs. DD3D, will love you and thank you greatly. Um, all right, let's grab our wrench, and we need our it says three millimeter Allen. Look at that, it's amazing how quickly I fix something and somebody uses it. Eagle Brett, thank you very much for the tenor. Tenor, that is ten more than I was expecting. Thank you, greatly appreciated. It's pretty freaking sweet. Another reason why I love this community. You guys are always down to help. It always lets me know when I'm doing something good or bad. Let's see. 8 mil and here. 
this is going to be a hard one to kind of show, guys. It's There's the nut on the back on the bottom for the eccentric. I'm just clicking on there. No matter the logo and the branding, I'll always be little Boreo cookie. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Blasto. Um, but, guys, you, it tells you to take all three of them off. And you need to because you're going to need to use these parts going onto the other uh, plate on the back. So start by taking all these apart and to make it easy for myself I put them back together the way I take them off just while I'm in transition from one to the other so I know which parts went with which wheel good good rule of thumb do this as you will but I just kind of slide everything back together won't fall and lose any pieces because they're all together I either lose it all or I don't lose anything set that down now you can take the plate off right here same thing and I'll show you now that I can use the plate you've got nut on the back with an 8 mil you got your 3 mil I'm using an iFixit kit same thing take it till it's loose and then you just take the nut off of there grab the wheel and the spacer lost the spacer but thankfully it fell right by my feet there we go okay put the spacer back on put the wheel back on and then put the nut back on there there we go now all that stays together less likely to lose it one more to go same thing just stick that on there whoops there we go get that guy on there like so see if you can get it to work where you can hold it like that great not that it's a you have to do it however it works for you Nut fell on the table, which is fine. Wheel, spacer, set them down. Drop the nut through. And actually, now that we're moving on to the next part, which I believe is just transferring everything over. Yes, yes we are. Okay. So the next part after that is, it says eccentric nut, and then put the two top ones on. I find it's easier to put the top ones on, and then put the eccentric in after the fact. Uh, the nice part is, let me look. Oh, yeah, their kit actually comes with all of the uh, the the parts, the screws and stuff. I forgot about that because they have a shorter screw. So these nuts and things you don't need, and it even comes with its own eccentric nut, too. Look, look, guys, you've got your one longer one for the eccentric and your two shorter ones with blue Loctite already applied. The two shorter ones go on the top through the V-wheel and in, and then your eccentric nut goes on the bottom with the washer and the... Uh, the, the other nut there. So you just need your V-wheels for this. If you were thinking about upgrading your V-wheels to something better, now would be a great time to do that while you're doing this. So for future note, if anybody is looking to do this upgrade and now you want to replace those V-wheels with something a little bit better, uh, this would be the time. This would be the time. I'm going to use the stock ones because I don't think I have anything better that I can use at the moment. Um, and I'm not going to go digging. <laughs> at least not right now so anyway we rip that open get in here dump out all the pieces we've got again the eccentric nut with everything and like I said they say to put the eccentric nut on first because it's easier we'll follow the directions on this because I'm kind of thinking they may be right you know not that not that I think I you know I would know better but Again, eccentric nut goes on, and then what do we got? They actually show with the eccentric nut that the nut is underneath next to the hot end. So nut will come through the hole here. Let me see. Can I bring you guys in closer again? Whoops. Stare at my shorts. There we go. Okay, so. Let's see, if I spin it this way. That's the nice part about this extruder is it can kind of spin things around. But again, you got the little round out here in the back. The longer side of the eccentric nut, guys, there's a short uh, spacer and a long spacer on the eccentric nut. The short side goes to the, the wheel. And again, we go basically through the wheel, through the eccentric nut, and then out the back side here. And then out this back side. I think 
Let me see. Do they show? Let me go look at the instructions, guys. Give me just a second. Back this up. Uh, insert the M3 screw into the V-wheel. There you go. Then you go through the eccentric nut as shown in the image. Not correct orientation. The longer boss face away from the wheel. Yeah. Okay. So in there. Okay. Yeah. The longer face does go down through the metal part. And then it says to secure the screw and the V-wheel in the bottom hole using the uh, pro, uh, the uh, provided washer and lock nut, like nylon lock nut. So here we go. We take the washer and the lock nut. Grab these real quick. Okay. Washer. Lock nut. Let's bring this down. Okay. So again, take this guy up through. Take your washer. Put that over, and whoops, lock nut. Let's see if I can get this on here. Sorry, my hands are all in the way, guys. But there you go. So there's that. Now we have to tighten everything down. I'm going to put you guys back now. I wanted to bring you in close for that part just to show a little up close and personal. Take your eight mil, put it over. It's the uh, you have the uh, L-shaped Allens, probably be a little easier with those because you're fighting into this nylon for the first time. Might need a little extra torque. So, put that on there, give it a nice little snug, and make sure your wheel spins, you know, make sure your wheel spins, it's not dragging or catching. Everything feels good there, so we are good on that one. Uh, not sure who that is. I'm not going to answer that. Somebody call, and, and I'm not answering. So, but there's that. We grab uh, another one of the shorter screws, the V-wheel. And then what we do is we pick this guy up now. we got to go follow your wires, guys. Make sure you got your wires running the right direction. You want to go up over the top. Let's untwist everything so we don't have any crazy twists. Try to keep the wires moving as naturally as you can. I'm going to spin this around now so you guys can kind of see here on the back because this is where we're working at. But we set this guy up over, put our eccentric nut in the hole there, and then run your V-wheel in. And you basically put one on one side and start it in. There we go. Now we're going to grab the other screw and the other V-wheel. Same thing. Set it the V-wheel in the channel next to where the hole is. Put the screw into the threaded hole. If you run into a problem like I am currently having, you may have to grab your wrench and give your eccentric nut a little twist. Let's see. Nope. And you want to make sure you don't go crazy tight when you tighten down that eccentric nut screw. Because if you make it too tight, it's hard to turn. Uh, ask me how I know. Okay. Let's back that up a little and then restart it. There we go. Don't forget these have blue Loctite on them. So you got to kind of fight that blue Loctite a little bit. This is actually a fairly quick and easy install as well. Um, that's why I really like the way the Micro Swiss kits are set up. That aluminum back plate is nice. It's a nice piece of milled aluminum. And basically just seat them down. There we go. Moving nice and smooth. Let's make sure it's not loose. We don't have to adjust the eccentric nut. Let's see. There's that. Okay. Should be good there. Let's spin this guy back around now because now we have to put the belt back on. When you put your belt back on, make sure you're over your pulley. You can look through the little door here. Make sure it's over that toothed pulley. And then you want to put it in 
on the motor side, I like to start with the motor side. You can pull the motor back towards you, or pull it back towards you on the motor there. You go up over. I'll show a shot with the camera here in just a second. There we go. Making sure it stays on the pulley, and it did. And then grab this side. And I believe on these Micro Swiss, yes, there is two notches. Um, on this one, because of the amount of excess I have, I am able to go all the way up. And I will spin it back around and show you guys here in a second. But I'm tightening it down real quick. Everything is lined up and in place. We don't want it super crazy tight either, so if it's super tight, let it back in some. You don't want it super loose, and you don't want it crazy tight. You want to have a nice little bit of play, and when you move it back and forth, if you don't feel or hear any clicking or dinging, like clicking or knocking, that means your belt's tight and tight enough. So let me spin this around real quick. Get this guy up underneath to kind of show you what I'm talking about back here. See these little slots here. You've got this one on the outside, that one on the inside, and then this one over here. So I start over here with this one. This is the one closest to the motor. You just push it up through. And then on this side, like I said, the, 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 there was enough slack with it loose that I was able to go to this one first. So I went closest to it and then tightened it down. Just over time, you know, hopefully you won't have to use this one out here if it's not necessary. I think, I'm not sure what that would be for. And, and probably like the bigger printers, maybe that's what you got to use that one for. One more I need to update. It's the tips link in the about section between Linktree and Cash App. Oh, sorry, Eagle Brett. Let me go back and look again. Uh, sorry, guys. I was just looking over and saw that. Um, go to my channel. Channel and scroll down. Um, um, hmm. I don't see that one off the top of my head, but I will I will dig in and find that one here in a little bit. I don't want to go super crazy into it right now, so let's go back here. We got that part done. We got the belt tightened up. Now it's time to mount the fans up and then put the uh, fan and the uh, shroud back on. And they're showing to just cut off like a two and a half inch piece of the PTFE tube of the original to put in there just so you have a nice little guide and we'll do that too but let's go back here now let's move this back up actually yeah we'll leave it kind of like this I'll we'll get the fans installed turn this back around grab this we've got our little let's see here we got our collets our clips uh, screws for the fans they've got four small screws which go for your blower fan and four a little bit larger ones for the park cooler or for the hot end fan so these two fans first one i'm going to put on let's take that other screw out real quick there we go just your 4010 blower fan just make sure the oh <laughs> sorry guys you come back up there we go 4010 blower fan. Make sure the blower side matches up with right here where the the fan goes in. Then it's just a matter of line it up. And let's see, are those Phillips heads as well? Yes, they are. Okay. They went Phillips heads as well for that part. So let's kick back over to our Phillips head bit. Set that down. Grab this guy right here. And oh, wrong, wrong bit. Wrong bit. Ah, there it is. Under all my stuff. Sorry, guys. Let's make sure that one fits. It does. Good. And then we'll start with this one down here in the corner. Just 
tighten it down snug. It is going into plastic. You don't have to crank it in there. Just tighten it down to snug. Start. Oops. Dropping screws. <laughs> there we go. Put it in the hole. Tighten it down. Grab the next one. Same thing. Find an empty, stick that in there, and tighten it down to snug. And last one for that. Stick that guy in there, tighten it down to snug. Now we put the other one on the front, which, let's see, does it have a direction? If not, let's take a look at the picture and see they do show it with the sticker side facing back. And where do they have the wire run out at? On the top. Okay, so your wire will come out the top of the fan, comes through the back in the clip, and goes on here like so. Wire out the back, or out the top. And again, grab one of the bigger screws. It is Phillips again. Put it in, and just tighten it down to snug. You don't have to crank any of these screws are down super tight you are again going directly into plastic they are an aggressive or coarse thread I don't know if you guys can see that but they are a coarse thread you don't have to go crazy aggressive screwing them down put it in tighten it down to snug and then last one here same thing bottom hole there we go nice and snug all right now what's left is to take the two black screws that we took out <laughs> and put those back in. These are, again, Allen's, so we do need to switch over to the Allen. Two and a half mil, if I remember right, or it might be the two mil. <laughs> Don't recall off the top of my head. And let's just see when they tuck the wiring how they did everything here. Uh, Got to plug in the extension cable for the stepper motor. I'm going to wait to plug that in here. I'll plug that in in just a minute. Uh, I do want to see, however... Uh, how did they run their wires? Does it run inside the housing and then up and out? It kind of looks like it does. There's a little slot in the side there. So, I am going to assume it goes down inside there. There we go. Okay, yep. There's a little slot down inside. You run your wires through. Let me see if I can turn this around and show you here. Okay, this little slot along the edge here. It's a little hard to see, and I do apologize. There we go. But that little slot right here, if you notice, there's a lip, and it's all black, and I have a garbage camera. So, But right here we go. Right, right in there. See how the bristles disappear? That's a little slot. You run the wires up alongside, and then they come right up and out the top. So, that would be how we do that. Put that back now. Come back down. Let me get these tucked back in here. And this fan wire, um, let me see something. That outside fan wire, I'm assuming probably stays on the outside i'll find out here momentarily though yeah because you wouldn't be able to run that back okay so well yeah you can okay so you tuck that back behind the screw yes okay and then that'll hold that back good and then the little ear here i'm finding that where this little ear is at on the back you can run the fan wire back around behind it and then you can put the screw in and that'll help kind of keep it back out of the, it won't be floating around freely and get in the way of anything. Let me get this screw off my finger real quick. Put this guy back here. We'll start with this top screw. Gosh, this part is a little awkward, guys. I do apologize. There we go. Go in. Get in that hole, and there we go, that one's in, 
And for me, my wires are right at the top of the fan shroud. Probably could have cut these a little more, but then they would be back behind here and kind of in the way. So I think I couldn't cut those any higher. Like we, we saw, I, I couldn't really go any higher with those. So I'm kind of at the, the, the limits of what I could do, and it worked out just perfectly. So this stuff sits just above. We can pull this sheathing back all the way up to as close as we can get it. But let's get that last screw in down under here. Slide that up into place. There we go. Okay. Whole hot end is assembled. Everything is together now. Um, and it's on. The only thing that's left to do now is the extruder wire. The extruder extension cable for the motor. The reason why I wanted to leave this out is because I want to see something here. If I... Yes, okay. Let me turn this around. See if we can make for a cleaner install, right? So what I'm going to show you is we can make this a little cleaner install. Let's come down here, point this in this general vicinity, and get as many obstacles out of the way as I can. But these two pieces, you can see this goes all the way down. Okay, it didn't work as, it wasn't going to work as well as I thought it would because this piece goes all the way down, so you'd have to fish it all the way back up and in. But I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit. You can choose to do what I do or not. But I'm going to pull this back quite a bit, get it down out of the way. And then somewhere down in here, I am going to make sure all my wires are out of the way. And grab my cutters here and nip into this a little. Make sure all the wire is out of the way before you go cutting, because if you cut a wire, you're going to be angry as all get out with yourself. Now we're going to peel this guy back to there. And we should, hopefully, and if not, we can just cut the whole thing apart and then squeeze it in there. You know, just make a slice or a splice. Tuck that up inside there. There we go. See? Push it up inside, and then we'll pull all this back down now. All you got to do is just, like a finger trap, just keep pushing. It'll keep going. And then once you get to that point where you can kind of bring it up, you'll be good to go. Grab it all the way up at the tip there. There we go. Opens it up quite a bit, and then makes it easier for that to kind of slide up on the inside there. You start running into an issue, you just move everything back. And once it pops out the top, there we go. Now we'll pull that up and in. And that's all the farther we can get it. So now we'll take this piece and this piece, our two ends, plug them in together. And then this guy, will go up to the top and plug into the motor. And you guys can see that, but it just goes right here in the top. Ta-da! Plug that in. Now we'll come back here and we'll work on kind of making all these wires a similar length and hide all of this back down inside of here. So we'll kind of open it up a little. There we go. Tuck that all back down in. Bring that back over the top. And just kind of pull everything back up and over. There we go. And there we go. Leave that like so. 
and then bring all this kind of back over the top and push it down until it gets to all these little clips. Let's see if we can open this up a little more. See how much we can hide inside the sleeve, you know? We hide it in the sleeve, it looks a little neater. Granted, it's just an illusion because it's still there, right in plain sight. Let's bring this up a little more. There we go. It's looking real ugly right here. Can't do much about that. That's why I hid that plug inside the sleeve. Let's see. Get up inside there. Yeah, those thermistor wires are just right at the top of that fan. There's not a whole heck of a lot I can do about that. That's okay. And the, the motor wire, I could have probably pulled a little bit more back, and probably still can, actually, if I'd come back here. And give it a little tug. That's the problem when you're playing with a Chinese finger trap, guys. It uh, doesn't always work out the way you want. That's fine. That'll work. Okay. That being said, that is done to the, you know, pretty much the best of my ability. I'm going to keep that up out of the way. Let's get some zip ties on everything here and tidy it up. Then we got to do the uh, E-steps. There's a couple ways to do the E-steps. They've got a file you can download and run, which is what they prefer. I personally will just probably figure out what those E-steps are and then go make the change in the Marlin firmware that comes on this. Uh, but we'll leave that like so. And put one zip tie just underneath those heater cartridge wires to keep those two butt connectors tucked up in there nice and tidy since I can't get the other two to, to do so. Which again is fine. Just got to untangle them real quick. There we go. Those will stay out. They're fine. There's that. And then let's see. Let's pull this up as far as it'll go because we can do that now. Let's get as much of this up here as we can. There we go. We'll put another one on this guy right at the end here just to kind of help keep all that tidied and together. Whoops. There we go. Whoop. All right. Back that up just a little bit. There. Put one here. And then, moving the extruder all the way out as far as it'll go. And then, kind of seeing what we have here. Because we want to make sure and when we are at our maximum height, there, max height, it'll have some ability to move. And let's put our bed back to make sure it stays out of the way of the bed. Let me put this down under here. That'll work. There we go. If I move that back down a little bit, that'll give us a little more slack. <laughs> Eh, it's all right. There, it works. There we go. And then we'll just take one zip tie, kind of go through the screw hole, because it'll fit, and then pull it through and up, and leave it a little loose so it's got some slack to move around if it needs to. There we go. And there. Okay. Now, let's spin this guy around. I know that the direction said use some stock PTFE2, but again, I have cap tube. I'm going to use some cap tube. So this is two and a half inches, okay? Man math, two and a half inches is like this long, okay? 
So that's like two and a half inches. But I'm guessing they mean more like uh, probably about a half inch. So I'll give it about a half inch. I'm kidding. You know, you only need enough to basically clear everything. And it only goes in a small ways. So put it in, push it down, leaves you a little nub out the top there for you to get your filament in. And it says to take the clip afterwards, stick that up under to hold everything together. So there you go. We've got probably about two and a half inches sticking out the top. We've got the clip underneath. We're good to go. So we have more than enough filament. There's one, le le uh, one thing left that they tell you to do, and that is turn this guy around because now you're doing direct drive straight into the hot end. So let's get the proper tool here. There we go. Eh, ooh, I'm going to have to... There we go. Got it. I got some pretty good grip there, huh? All right. Spin this around. And just tighten them back down now. I am moving this over just a little bit more, too. So you can move it off the edge a little bit more. There's that one and that one i like to flush them up with the the face here the face of this 2020 it's just an ocd thing you don't have to give it a little snug up another little snug up pretty quick guys we'll be firing this thing up and doing our e-steps and a pid tune and all that fun stuff there we go all right to make sure now that I've got that yeah they are showing to zip tie the wire to it but because I stuck I, I stuck it down inside uh, I went back and nipped it like I said again if you are going to follow my stupid rule if you're gonna follow what I did you are responsible for your own so be careful the other thing it tells us is there's this brass little screw right here the tensioning screw this guy right here they show that they have a piece of filament in there to guide it or to test it. I am going to put the filament in and just see how it feels. So let me grab filament. What did I originally have in? Oh, it was almost out. That's right. Um, I guess we'll pick. Let's go with the bright green because it'll stand out quite a bit. So some bright green. It's one of the uh, mixtape colors. It's mixtape number 21 from the... Jesse, pretty and solid. But we'll we'll get it started in here. Push it down through the tube, and then I believe, yeah, you push in. And I didn't cut that in an angle. I just broke it off, so it's probably gonna fight me a little bit. Oh, there we go. It bit. Okay. Filaments in there. This side's a little typical of your your printers with a single-sided z it's got a little weeble wobble there but printing quality isn't terrible so we'll we'll leave it be for now i'm not doing any crazy super high speed prints with it so let me sit down here throw this stuff in the garbage real quick and did i plug in the power i sat down for nothing because i had to get back up anyway guys <laughs> okay power on let's see Fan came on, so that's a good sign, right? Fan comes up, that's a good sign. That's what they always say. These two wires, I tell you, just tuck down there and tuck, tuck in down there for now. There we go. All right. It is on. Now, let me come over here. Let's switch to the right screen for the moment. All right. In here, they tell you to download this E-Step G code, install it on the printer, or uh, copy it to your... Um, then they tell you to copy it to your uh, SD card and then run it on the printer and it will set your E-Steps. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to open it. And I want to look at it in Notepad++. And there we go. So, 
give me just a second here to move this over to the screen. As you can see, the only thing it's doing is setting your E steps to 400 and then saving it with an M500. You guys probably can't see that. Let me, let me zoom in a bit. Actually, here, let's just, bloop. and then where is my adjust font? Eesh. All right, anyway, view, zoom. There we go. So you can see, it's just doing an M92 E400, then it's doing a M500 to save it, and then an M116 to tell, or 117 to tell you that it was saved. <coughs> Forgive the cough, I'm still getting over that stupid allergy bug. That being said though, let's go back to our doc, our doc cam. Let's go to the screen here. Now let's go into control, motion. Um, I believe it is under speed. Yeah, okay. Extruder is currently set to 25. Click on that. Wait a minute. Not speed 25, leave that alone for, I, I think I'm in the wrong spot. I don't wanna necessarily do the wrong thing. Let me double check something. Oh wait, speed. Yeah, speed, millimeters per second. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, change that to 400 because of the gearing. Uh-oh, it won't let me go higher than 50. Wow. I guess we might have to cheat and use the uh, G-code. Let's see. Uh, transmission ratio. That's where we wanted to go. Sorry, transmission ratios, yes. Okay, so I set it back. Transmission ratio is at 43. That sounded more like a number I'm used to. Now the fun part. Spinning, 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 spinning. Just keep spinning until you get up to 400. Oops, we went to 423. We don't want 423. We want 400. And then we'll, we'll test that out. 400 on the nose. There we go. Go back up. Go back up, come down to store configuration. Now that's stored. Let's go to read configuration, and then let's go back into motion, uh, transmission, and we're at 400. So there we go. Now we'll go back, let's go back, let's go back. Let's go to prep, preheat for PLA. We'll get this preheating, and then we will attempt to check our E-steps. We'll see if they are correct or if we have to adjust them a little bit one direction or the other. So, we'll move this back so you guys can see and get it heated up and see if we can get something oozing out of here. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's getting warm. It's getting warm. Boy, is it. It's heating up quick. I definitely got to give credit, man. It's at 140, 151, 155, 159. 162, 165, 69, 172. I mean, it's it it's climbing, guys, quick. It's almost to 200 already. And nozzles at 200. It's 198, 197, 196, 197, 198, 199, 200. There you go. It's at 200. So that was pretty quick. It definitely heats up fast, don't it? Definitely like that. And then the bed, it doesn't matter. We're going to go into uh, control, motion. No, we don't want control and motion. We want uh, prep, move. Let's go ahead and home everything real quick first, I guess, since I was stupid and hit homing instead of move. Plus, this way, we can adjust our Z offset, too, at some point, right? I'm probably going to try my manual Z offset again. Let's see. Oh, yeah. We're plenty high. We should be good. Okay. Anyway, let's go to move. Let's move X. Move X out a little bit. I'm going on to Y, and we'll move Y out a little bit, too. 
There we go. And let's move Z. Whoa, not that high. Come out there. It's going to go up a ways and then come back down, guys. My bad. And then we'll get ready to move the extruder. And we'll see if we are pushing plastic. Okay. All right. Now, extruder. Let me see down in there. It is moving. Is it moving the right direction? It seems like it is. Yep, it's pulling in. Okay. Let's see here. Let's watch that bad boy for some oozing. Cruising for an oozing. There it is. Look at that. We got filament. All right. Stuff is coming together. Things are working. We're going to have to do a measurement of 100 millimeters and then move it 100 millimeters and make sure that's working. Uh, let's go back up real quick. That's right. They don't have the where you can set your distance that you want to move. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and take that off of there. Let's grab our ruler. Let's grab a marker. I am going to measure from the top of the PTFE tube. I'll bring you guys up here. I'm measuring from the top of the PTFE tube. And I'm going to measure from there up to in my case it's 10 centimeters and then we're going to tell it to throw out 100 gosh this is taking forever that's why i like my touch screen sometimes or my ability to change my movement value i could have just jumped into like Proner face and connected it to the computer, but it's okay. Oops. Should, when it's done, pull just past. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Ooh. These lungs of mine, I tell you. All right. You can see the line coming down here. There's the problem. Extruding it from here is going super slow. Could just write a quick G code and tell it to extrude, you know. A hundred at, you know, whatever. But it looks like 400 is going to be pretty much pretty good. We're getting closer and closer. And I'll take that. It stopped just at, just uh, about what? Uh, it stopped about where the line's at. I was above, so about one mil. We'll take that. We'll take one. So there we go. There's that. Let's go ahead now. And uh, yeah, let's get our, let's get everything honed. So we'll get out of there. Go back. Auto home. Let's get everything homed again. Let's get that little, little guy off of there. 
the last time when I built this, I eyeballed my bed level, and I was pretty spot on. I'm wondering if I can buy that again. I'm wondering. We'll have to see. Okay. So let's go back up here and go back to home and let's see where is Z is at zero, which is where we want to be. And then let's go ahead now and control motion. No, not control motion. I keep going into control. It's under prep. Prep, disable steppers. There we go. Let's move this guy out to above that screw. Pull this guy out. And then let's back this up and bring it up until it just touches. And then we'll come across. Same thing. Loosen it up. It's oozing out a little bit, so I'm moving it, wiggling it just enough that I can kind of see. Come back. Hmm. Hmm. Tweezers in here? I do. Should have probably cooled it down just a little bit. Can't get anywhere with the tweezers. That's eh, all right. We'll we'll run a little test print after the fact. That actually looks okay. And we come this way, and boy, come down. Ow, put my hand in the fan, like a dingus. What did I, what is that? Oh, that side's way too low. So we'll have to, let's see here, but that looks pretty good. That one is a little, little low. You guys like looking at my bald spot? <laughs> let's see. I am finding huh. interesting. I don't think you guys will have this problem, but I've got the problem where as the bed comes back, it's dragging against the uh, motor and whatnot. Huh. All right. Well, here. Let's go to. Oh, we got to set our. We got. We now have to go in and set our retraction, which set the retraction distance to one millimeter on your slicer. Do not use any G code where the slicer with a retraction distance higher than 1.5 millimeters. Okay. So we just have to jump into slicer real quick here. I use super slicer again for anybody who is still here and watching and doesn't know. I use super slicer. So let's go over here, hop into printer settings. And not the printer settings, but let's jump over here. Go to super slicer, go into extruder, and then oh, let's get on the right printer first, huh? Uh, do, 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 do. Ender 3v2. Currently it says one, so 1.0. Doesn't say anything about changing your retraction speed. Um, new track, detract. I'll leave those alone. It didn't say to change those. It just said change the length. So let's go ahead and save that now. V2. 
I'm going to name this ng repo. Ng repo. Click OK. Let's go back here. Let's uh, make sure we have everything set right. We use PLA 0.2. Let's go grab our LDO cube off the desktop. Boom, boom, there we go. Grab our LDO cube, because we like LDO. And LDO provides the motors for these, so why not? All right, slice that file up. There we go. Look at that. One hour, 22 minutes. I don't know that I'll stream for one hour and 22 minutes. I've already got two hours in today, so I'll probably post a picture of it on the socials after the fact. But... We will at least get it started and make sure everything is level. So let me get the SD card out here and find my reader. There we go. Plug this in here. Shoot that file over there. Let's go ahead and delete all of these real quick, just so I don't accidentally try to use them. Whoops. Oh, I guess it would help. Let's just do this the easy way. Hold on. There we go. All right. Let's re upload that. There we go. OVO Cube. Inject and go back over here. Pull that out. Stick that in there. And let's go back to home. Print LDO cube. Here we go. I didn't wipe the bed down, so we'll see how good that works. <laughs> Let me get a little stand here. Kind of lift you guys up a little bit. Here. And stick that out to the side. We we'll use the micro Swiss box. Flip you guys around again, real quick. There we go. Let's see how I did on my bed leveling. Probably hot garbage. But we can adjust on the fly and then restart the print if need be. All right. Let's see. It's looking pretty good there on that prime line. Sticking nice. Okay, coming over to the middle. Let's see. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Nice. That is a good looking print. That first layer is looking good. Let's go up, up. And out just a little bit. Okay. Oh, just a little bit more there and a little bit more there. I think we're good. We're going to let that ride out and we'll see how it does. It says one hour, 22 minutes. So one hour and 22 minutes from now, 23 minutes from now. I will uh, probably post something to the socials. But again, I want to say thank you to Micro Swiss for sending this bad boy out. That uh, first layer is looking nice. It's running very well. Everything seems to be happy. And uh, let this bad boy go. Just watching the second layer go down, guys. 
it'll be fun to, you know, clipperize this at some point, maybe. But, all right. Well, let me jump back to the big camera. <coughs> Move the chair in. And jump back to here. To those of you who have made it this far, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Um, I guess before I go, we'll, we'll just kind of hang out and chat for a little bit while that's printing in the background there. I guess I could jump to, like, this one, and then you guys can kind of see it there. You know, let you guys watch it while I sit here now, and we'll close that, come back over here. Some service tips that they say, loading filament says preheat the hot end to the printing temperature. Cut the tip of the filament at a 45 degree angle. Straighten the tip of the filament out. Use the printer menu issue or printer menu. It's a menu issue and a, oh, and then a, a, a administer or issue a extrude command. Jeez. Insert the filament into the extruder as the gear is rotating. When loading filament, do not press the extruder arm until the filament is or the filament has made its way into the blue or into the tube and the extruder gears. Okay. Removing the nozzle. So Revo nozzle replacement procedure. Remove the filament from the hot end. Allow the hot end to cool down to below 50 C. Unscrew the nozzle with your fingers. Screw the new nozzle in with your fingers. The new, no new nozzle can be finger tightened on, uh, while the hot end is at room temperature. There is no need to preheat or uh, use tools to tighten the nozzle. Those are tips and procedures directly from Micro Swiss. So keep those things in mind. We can see them right here at the end of the instructions. Uh, over on YouTube, I'll make sure to link to this down below, the instruction guide or the install guide. It has all this great information in here. And uh, also, if you want to get one, there it is on the Micro Swiss store. This was again for the Ender 3. So I did install this on the Ender 3 V2. It does work on the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, and the Ender 3 V2 Neo, as well as the CR10 S4, S5, S, and the CR10. Again, in the box, you do get the Master Extruder Assembly, uh, Adoption Plate, one LDO stepper driver, one fan shroud, one custom extension cable, one Revo hot end assembly. It's got one Revo CR heater core for 12 or 24, depending on which one you need. The heater core spring and 1.4 brass nozzle. Hardware that comes in the kit is one eccentric nut, one M5 by 8 by 30 cap screw, one M5 inside diameter 10 millimeter outside diameter washer, 1M5 with a 0.8 nylock nut, 2M5.8 uh, by 20 millimeter nylon uh, patch screw caps, uh, 4 2.2 millimeter or 2.2 or M2.2 by 8 millimeter uh, thread forming plastic uh, screws for plastic, 4M3 by 12s. Um, threaded form, uh, thread forming screw for plastic, five zip ties, four butt splice connectors. Mine actually came with five butt splice connectors, so I had an extra. So thank you for that, Micro Swiss. Uh, as you can see, rave reviews from a lot of people uh, that have tried one out. Um, got a three star in here. Says for the Neo would appreciate better instructions. So somebody is saying that they would prefer some better instructions for the Neo. This was uh, a little bit a couple months ago, so probably, you know, I, I wouldn't think that between all the printers, the install, especially on the Creality side, would be super different. But it very well could be. So, but again, guys, thanks for coming and hanging out. Thanks for following me on this little journey. I'm going to end this here, probably record something real quick for the old Tiki Talk, let everybody see that uh, it's up and printing, and then uh, probably post a picture to all the socials, letting everybody see that it is currently installed and running. 
And, uh, yeah, when the print is done, I will post a picture to the socials. So, again, guys, thank you for coming and hanging out. My usual spiel. Uh, see how trouble staying out of jail and all that good stuff. But before I go, don't forget, links will be in the description down below for the YouTubes. On here, uh, you know, do the old uh, bang NG Revo real quick before we go. Uh, there it is. There's the link in the chat on Twitch here. So for those of you who came and watched this live on Twitch, thank you. There's the link if you want to get one, go get one. Don't forget, tell them Maker Mind Nexus sent you. I said, I don't have any kind of affiliate links or anything. It's just a, if you would, if you see what you like and you want one, just tell them Maker Mind Nexus did it. I liked it. That's why I bought one. Just let them know that what I'm doing and what they're doing to help me is, is all a great thing. So, again, guys, stay out of trouble, stay out of jail. Happy 3D printing. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Later.